What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be doing a piano roll shootout with Studio One and FL Studio. <laughs> What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today I'm going to do a little shootout on the piano rolls inside of my favorite doll, Studio One, and everybody else's favorite doll, FL Studio. Um, most of the people who like praise the, the, uh, the FL Studio piano roll haven't used anything else. They haven't used anything else and they're so used to the look of the step sequencer that FL Studio runs that it's just um it's hard for them to even to even like give any uh give any thought to to another doll that that looks a little different. So for example, right, if I want to if I want to go into the piano roll inside inside uh FL Studio, I have to I I have to do one or two things. Um I can either press this button here and it'll bring up the piano roll or I have to right click and select piano roll. But the thing about it is, is in order to pick which one I'm going to use, I have, I have to go ahead and select one of these, one of these tracks first. So that no matter what it is, a click here, move the mouse and go somewhere else. And when you're, when you're, when you want to make music, you want to make, you want to have an experience that's as, um, that it, it evokes as little mousing around as possible. Now, if I want to use the if I want to use the piano roll in Studio One, there's a couple ways I can get to it. I could just I could have a MIDI region set up, and I double click on it. Boom, it's there. If I want it gone, I press P. Um, if I don't have a MIDI region set up, I could just click on something, press P, it's up. Click on something, press P press p it's up click on something press p it's up i mean the hotkey functionality the double click functionality is something that you just don't get any faster with and when you're going from idea to idea you want to go ahead and do some and make something fast now the next thing that for me really makes fl studios piano roll hard to work with is just one of its perceived strengths and that's um and that's going ahead and 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 slicing things um so for example the, the workflow a lot of people when they're making when they're making tracks in fl studio oh hi-hats are hi-hats are so easy because all i have to do is fill two steps and now i've got a hi-hat okay that's cool um now we want to do something with that so let me go ahead and mouse over to piano roll Let's go ahead and pull that up. All right. First of all, the, um, something something that's super weird about FL is just like why 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 did why does the MIDI region look like that? You know, it's 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 so it's so little. So if you want to go ahead and and drag it out, um, the easiest way, you know, because you definitely want to always use hotkeys. You press Control A. And it'll it'll go ahead and um, and select all the things, and you can press Control L, and that'll that'll drag them out. Now you have, all right, let me get rid of this. Now you have this. Okay. Now say I wanted to slice something, right? I wanted to slice this note. Well, first of all, I have to I have to change from from this tool that I'm looking at right here in order to select something to this tool up here then i then i could le either left click or press control u and then that'll make a slice now if i wanted to if i wanted to control these slices i need to go to this menu go into okay you put you could press alt u to bring this up and now you can now you could bring up the the different times that you can use to make the to make your different slices right so now you can go ahead and begin to get creative 
with your patterns. You have to click accept. And it's just, uh, to me, let's see, press Alt U, and then click this up or down. To me, it's just, and then and then you have to click accept again. That's, that's three, four clicks to go ahead and, and do that. Not only that, you can't really see what you're doing here. Like you don't have a defined nomenclature for what time signature am I even going to, you know, which is, um, which really doesn't help you because if you if, if you work in a program like this and this is how you're used to creating music and you go and work with another musician and they ask you to uh you know hey maybe you should chop that chop that into triplets and then you look at them because you don't know what a triplet is because fruity loops does not have triplet in their lexicon you know you look like you look like a, you look you just don't look like you really know what you're doing um, and you know, with, you know, with musicians, like everybody's a nerd, you know, you don't want to come off like, like dumb. So for doing that same process inside studio one, I know I want my hi-hat, uh, let me select a hi-hat. Um, I know I want my hi-hat to be in eighth notes, for example. All I got to do is hold down D real quick, right? So I just hold down D, bomb. They're all there. Now I got this. Okay, now if I want to make a stutter, I just select a note, select a time signature, so let's say 16T, and then just press the key command for split a grid, which I've set to as plus, and I just go ahead, do this, and it's so much more precise, it's a, it's a few less clicks, and you could, hi you could highlight whatever you want to split it whatever time signature you want and now you have now you have something that's a lot easier to come up with so it's really it's the the whole the whole slicing aspect of it comes together so much faster when you you know when you use the key command and you can be so much more accurate with with the actual time signature names if you come across other musicians you can actually communicate you know like like you know what the hell you're doing other than just knowing how to use one program um so that's really that's really a big thing for me is just it's just I don't like how this is set up with the whole um with this whole menu here that you have to that you have to constantly be in i don't like that there's these tools right here it, these are important tools you should you should be able to to um to access these to access these quickly you know now we all know about the fl studio ghost notes those are awesome and um a lot of a lot of folks miss that when they when they switch over but what you don't know is that that is really easy to do in a, in uh in studio one and they've added even more functionality to it so say for example i have this arp going it just makes something just completely gross right so i have that arp and then i've got I've got this sound going. This is not going to sound good. And then I've got this sound here. You know, and say I wanted to say I wanted to use massive to um, make something, but I I didn't. You know, I was confused about the scale, and I wanted to see what what, what else was going on. All you got to do to uh, to see the other um, the other patterns and noticing the other patterns is press this button here, and that'll bring up all your MIDI tracks. And when you press the circle next to them, let's see here it'll bring up everything everything that you want to see so so now when you look inside when you look inside the piano roll you can see all of the all of the different um notes 
that are being triggered by each different track. And if you want to be able to um, write for a certain instrument track, you just turn off like you have this pencil. Let's see if you if you turn off if you if you turn that pencil gray, that makes it so that you can't write in any of the other tracks and you're just using massive now. So say I wanted to stack, um, you know, say I wanted to make a melody where I wanted to use the fifths of these right here, right? So I would go or say, say I didn't know what the fifths were. Um, th this is the other thing that I love about the, the Studio One piano roll is you just take, you select a scale. Let's see here, go to minor and you click this button here and it's only gonna let you click the notes that are in this scale, right? And to, to find the fifth of this, I just go, I just go up. Here's one, two, three, four, five by the num by the number of notes in the scale. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Oops. Hold down Alt to copy a note. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Boom. And if I want to duplicate that pattern, just press D. Now I have, you know, now I have this. I mean, obviously I'm not going to make a track that sounds <laughs> anything like that, but you know, for the sake of, for the sake of example, you see now it's so much easier to see the differences between all these uh, between all these different um, notes because one you can color code them which makes it super easy which I'm, I, I think you could do that in FL studio too I just I just don't think that I see a lot of people doing it um, in videos but you know you have you, you, you have the uh, you have the the scale quantize which is which is not available in FL Studio. You know, you have to like draw out the scale and like leave it over here. Like I see in tutorials, and then you're like, oh, you could click these. I mean, with this, you you can't you can't draw sound from that. You know, and say I did try to click in that space, the program is automatically going to move it down one semitone so that it's in a good spot. So if you don't, if you're at a point in your um in your music making where you don't know you're not used to uh, you know music theory you don't know a bunch of scales this is the type of piano roll that you want to work in um logic has a, a function that's that's it that's exactly the same to this where you can um and theirs is actually called scale quantize where you just quantize to the scale so this idea um that you know um fl studio has has this amazing piano roll that can be on that is just completely un uh challenged by any other program in my opinion is is a complete myth now i tell you one of the things that i do like about um fl studios piano roll i feel like i, I feel like the um the way that their step sequencer and um and piano roll handles um samples is amazing like the way that the way that you set a root note of a sample by simply right clicking here um the way you can the way you can just go to edit and and drop something into edison to get, like get the pitch of an 808 is faster than um you know than sample one um the different the uh the slide notes how you can how you could put um uh, polyphony on on on, di on different samples there's a lot of different um it has an arpeggiator now there's a lot of different um modes to the sampler inside um fl studio that um a sample a, a sampler like uh like sample one has not caught up with um up until this point in the uh, in the history of of the program but in my opinion, I still prefer because because if I want if I wanted that functionality, like I could use contact, you know, contact contact can do all that. But, you know, typically, typically I don't I don't need that. Um, so I just stick with sample one and essentially 
you could think about it like this like if you're like if you're an fl studio user and you were thinking about coming over if you're looking if you're looking at this right like these are these are just tracks you know so if you if, if you're like oh i can only make drums with this step sequencer i mean if i don't see them gray and red boxes i can't make drums like like fam it's it's the same shit here you're gonna put it in into a into a uh into piano roll anyway to chop it so here's you know this this right here is this you know that's it, it, it it's the same shit and here when you go here here's your attack hold decay here's your lfo when you come when you come here here's your here's your attack hold decay pitch filter lfo monophonic here's your glide function okay it's it, it's it, it, it's all pretty much there it just it just looks different um again i'm not gonna front i do like the um the extra features that fl studio sampler has but that's about it for me this is a much faster workflow the other th the other thing that i don't like about fl studio is you um if if you bring up the mixer and i just i don't understand this at all i don't know why this program is like this if if you make a mixer track like this this kick should be one this clap should be two this hat should be snare like i shouldn't have to take an extra step to send um these channels to the mixer channel like like these shouldn't be grouped to the main out it should it, it should already be spread out on the mixer what the what what a program like fl studio is doing is they're not they're not giving you options by doing that even though that's how it's pitched is they're just making it another click that i have to do and the the way that i look at music production is the more clicks that add up in the process of what i'm trying to do that's the more time i don't have to make my next video or my next track or you know set you know upload upload my next piece or or you know or, stu or study for a test that i have or something of that nature like so it's all about workflow it's all about staying streamlined um i just i just really don't want to hear any of this mess about um about fl studios piano roll being the only thing that people could possibly make music on like it's like it's some type of perfect invention because really it is an fl studio was was designed to just be a toy and it's been added on and it's became you know like a powerful professional level hit making you know powerhouse of a doll but the way that it's organized is it's just stuff that's thrown on top of each other and you see that in, in the disorganization of the piano roll um but if it's what you choose to use and you're good on it dude then use it you know what i'm saying kill that shit um just you know don't don't go around you know telling everybody that it's th that it's this amazing thing that only occurs inside fl studio because that really isn't the case fam so anyhow hope you guys took something away from this video this is concrete zebra with craft master production studio one tutorials.com keep it simple don't be basic